Let's go, huh? The Matt Mayoko. What about our guy, Matt Mayoko, John? This is what he said on KNBR on Monday. First takeaway is the 49ers quarterback room is better. Yeah. There's no question about it. Like, yes. Trey Lance did not have a safety net with, with Nate Sudfeld or with Brock Purdy. Now, not only does he have a safety net, if Trey Lance loses, if the 49ers lose, let's put it this way, if the 49ers lose September 11th at Chicago and Trey Lance doesn't play well, that safety net might just become a trampoline that bounces over Trey Lance and could be the starter the next week. That's what, I mean, there's, I've, I've long believed the 49ers were the most interesting team in football heading into this season. Now there's no question because if Trey Lance experiences the ups and downs like, like we all know that he will, but his downs contribute to a loss or two, it's, it, it puts everybody in a difficult position because I think we could probably all agree last year the best guy, you know, the best quarterback to lead the 49ers last year was Jimmy Garoppolo. Now, they, you know, they made the no questions asked. Trey Lance, he's the starter. We're moving on. But it's, now it's not so clear cut that, that the number one quarterback is the number one quarterback. And it, the onus is certainly on Trey Lance to prove it every week. How could you argue with that? Last year's starting quarterback is on the team, right? I, I just think that Matt is like Peter King, a uh, big J's J. I mean, this guy is not – and even Matt, I would say, is a little – bit like Peter does sometimes have to talk on NBC and say some things. Matt does a show every week with Kyle Shanahan. Like Matt Mayoko, I mean, is probably the longest tenured – one of them probably in the NFL, wouldn't you say? Of just like a beat writer. I mean, he's. I think he's. On. I think he's probably one of them. Uh, I don't know if maybe influential would be the word. Influential. I mean, his he he does influence the sport, right? He is he is a big part of who gets into the Hall of Fame. He is part of that process. So yeah, I would say he is one of the stalwarts, one of the tent poles, whatever you want to call it, of NFL coverage. Yeah, and I, I think he when he pushes back on like, you know, this is hyperbole. He's done that. You and I have talked to him for years. You used to have him on the radio show. Like he'll pump the brakes on stuff. So him saying that, I think it's a twofold. I think it gets back to what Silver's saying. These guys talk to the coaches, the coaching staff. Not not like kind of people around the peripheral of the team, periphery of the team, the staff. They know what the thought process is. And then you've just been around the league long enough. Just fucking do the math. Wait, this guy was the starter last year. He's an eight, nine-year vet. He's just proven. And it's not one of those, well, he's only been a starting quarterback on the shitty teams. Like Jared Goff. Let's say he starts three years on the Lions. If the most he ever wins is five or six wins, he has no equity. Like, let's face it, Jimmy has some equity in the building with the, with his teammates, with his coaching staff, hell, with the fans. Like, Jimmy has equity. And Trey's equity is just out of draft capital. It's not out of that proving anything and, and hope, right? And hope's one of the most powerful things in the world, right? For any human, <laughs> you know, if you, if you have a little hope, I mean, it's 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 powerful. Whether it's in sports or whether it's in life or no matter what you're doing, but he does not represent anything tangible like Jimmy does. And so if you just if you just take the emotion out of it, and even if you don't know the dynamics, and you just presented this to a sports fan, they'd be like, ah, this is kind of a weird situation, right? And then let alone once you know all the dynamics and you factor in what Matt would know, I don't think he's just saying this stuff. I, I know you don't either, but I, I think a lot of people listening and the internet loves pushing back on this shit. It's just not made up now. It's just not. Like we know it's, it is what it is, you know? I, I think that's just buckle up, you know? Buckle up because I, I am prepared for anything. I'm not saying like he's getting benched in a half, but it's all on the table. And that guy will look around the league all season long. There won't one thing Matt is right about. There is not another dynamic with a guy with a hat and a clipboard standing there like this one. Not even close. Not even close. Because remember, I think when Carson Wentz got benched for Jalen Hurts a couple years ago. I think immediately then Sudfeld got bumped up and Wentz kind of got like, it's just kind of over for the year. 
like we're going to put you on ice. Like, obviously, there were different personal dynamics there, but this is part of it. Like, you just couldn't have, you know, you're always just one play away or one bad series away, and that's not how it's supposed to be, but that's what it's kind of going to feel like. I'm, I'm excited. This makes something we talk about much more interesting, more people watching. Like Matt said, I'm a little biased like him. It, it easily, I don't know where – top two or three it's it's one of the more polarizing things in the nfl it's not even debatable because we did something to get a race from the record books after this story broke about trey lance's relevance just in the national football league he's all over the place because he is the one of the great unknowns and factoring in the draft capital everyone's fascinated with now that you had this dynamic it, it was a jaw dropper when it happened and i think the more and more you let it soak in you just take the take a step back take a deep breath and it's like whoa this is this could get weird fast. Look, I think we – could the Niners have won a Super Bowl with Jimmy Garoppolo? They could have, but they didn't. Could they have been in the Super Bowl last year? They could have, but they weren't. And I think there's a lot of reason to keep Trey Lance on the field, even if today he's 85% of Jimmy Garoppolo, but for the possibility of him becoming – much, much better than Jimmy. And knowing that even if he's 85% Jimmy Garoppolo, both of them are limited. Both of them require you to play complementary football with your defense, with your run game. And because Trey can do things that Jimmy cannot, and those things can change the game, it makes sense to keep Trey Lance ahead of Jimmy Garoppolo, even when there are things Jimmy can do that Trey can't. Because Trey's advantages are more unique his athleticism, his ability to use his legs, and his arm strength. So he doesn't have to be exactly Jimmy because he can do different things than Jimmy. They're not exactly the same. But the fact is that Jimmy Garoppolo was the better quarterback in Kyle Shanahan's estimation all of last season, and they last played a game on January 9th. Well, today it's August 30th, so it's been about seven months. So is Trey Lance better than Jimmy Garoppolo now? when seven months ago he was not the better option. For the entire offseason, it looked like the, the answer to that was yes. And I think right now, everything considered, trying to win, the things he can do, his mobility behind an offensive line that has some questions, and the upside potential with him, I still think Kyle Shanahan believes there is an advantage to playing Trey Lance over Jimmy Garoppolo. But for all the pressure that went on Kyle when he drafted Trey, right? this better work, Kyle, or else. This better work, Kyle, or else your job is on the line. The way to combat it, if you don't think it's going to work, is just to win football games and yeah. to go with the guy that you think can help you win the most football games. And then you can overcome a failed draft pick. So that reality exists. I think what you said, and you said it a lot last year, Kyle's number one priority is how do I win this week? And then how do I win next week? And how do I win a championship this year? And I'll deal with that fallout later. We saw it happen with RG3. Now, again, different situation. He towards was ACL, put, yeah. Like, like there was a story today, and I don't, I'm sorry, I don't remember exactly where it came from, but it was, you know, Mac, Kyle had to be talked into Mac. I talked out, of, like, not talked out of Mac so much as Kyle wanted Mac and he was influenced away from Mac. I 100% believe, I've, I have believed that. Of course, that's a possibility that he liked Mac and they got scouts in the building and the athletic wrote a piece that said Adam Peters is the best evaluator in the league and John Lynch and collaborative of scouting and all of this stuff. So it's very possible that there was a point in time where he thought Mac Jones was a better pick than Trey Lance, but ultimately he took Trey Lance. That's who he took. Kyle Shanahan was not going to get Kyle Shanahan was, do you, do you agree with this draft a quarterback? He didn't want to draft. He's in charge. He wasn't going to draft Trey Lance. If he wanted to draft Mac Jones, I, I could see just like, he's like, I'm going to all, you know, even the owner, like, are we sure? And he just kind of feels like, he's like, I, it's close enough that I'll go with Trey. Here's my point. Getting talked into a guy is different than drafting the guy you don't want to draft. Yeah. I, I think he likes, he, well, right now, I don't know exactly who his feeling on Trey Lance. I think at the time that they drafted him, he liked Trey Lance and the, and the possibilities. Was it Mike sure. Lombardi that said that to various said Lombardi said a bunch of stuff today. Lombardi had a post like, uh, this is don't believe the cover up or something like that. The cover up of what? I don't, well, he's been adamant that Jimmy was headed to the Seahawks. So I haven't seen if he revealed exactly what the cover up was since then. But. So the Niners just paid him so he wouldn't go to the Seahawks. I mean, I, 
<laughs> I, I, I do think there are some different versions of the the way the Trey Lance played out that I would possibly believe. I'm with you. If he was yeah, like, yeah, I agree with that. If Mac Jones to him was the guy that he wanted, and Trey Lance was like closer to Justin Fields, I think he would have said like, "Screw you guys can fire me if this doesn't work out." I think he came around a lot. I do believe when they were flying home from Fields workout, he was drawing the Trey Lance stuff. I think he was very intrigued by the running element. But I do think when you're at practice, you know when the running element kicks in in hmm. games. In games. Yeah. yeah. You know where it doesn't it doesn't really show up? Practice. Yeah. And in practice, what's happening? Just kind of normal plays. It's why I bet like Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, like in their heyday, I mean Tom's still now in practice is probably just a clinic. You know, sometimes you read, you're like, what a day today by Aaron Rodgers, not a ball on the ground, right? Just this foof, 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 foof. That because it's it's really just kind of seven on seven. But the Kyler Murray Lamar talking to my guy in Baltimore, it's like Lamar's awesome in practice, not running. He's not doing all the jukes. That, that's or Kyler too. That's that's live. So one of Trey's elements, it happened in the game for the first time. He slid. We're like, whoa! Now he runs every once in a while, but it's not. Kyle's putting zero emphasis into that. It's all about the passing game, and the passing game would make you nervous if you were at practice on some days. Like there were enough days where it was the days we were there, and other days we weren't there. Where it was, I mean, the yeah. numbers are just hideous. Yeah. Right. And, and I, nine of 15, you would say sometimes with Trey or nine of 16, four or five of those are, it's not like, you know, it was just a tough play. It was like, Oh, I, but I don't, to me, I said this a lot, John, the numbers, it's more about seeing it than it is the picks or the numbers. Some my my these, point is though, like three or four of the completions though are so terrible that like, if you're there, it's yeah. just one of those things. Like I've said this my entire life. I don't value practice that much. The games are fucking how you make your money. That's not coaches don't value practice. They they live for it. It means a lot to them. Yeah. Uh, the Lombardi tweet was: If Jimmy G was always a part of their plan to remain with the team, why didn't he practice? Once again, the cover up is more damaging than the truth. And you said that they said that he wasn't part of their plan. Yeah, he right? wasn't part of their plan. 